uh, Dimitrik Felton of UCLA, Chubba, uh, Chubba Hubbard from Chubba Hubba. I want Hubba him just for his name. <laughs> yeah, that reminds me of like the Hubba Bubba Bubblegum. <laughs> reminds me of Chumba Wumba. Uh, Chubba, please don't, please don't listen to this and come find, find us and <laughs> tear us up. Please don't do that. <laughs> You're now listening to the Wandering Buffalo Podcast with your hosts, Andrew Ganaic and Justin Goddard. Gentlemen, welcome in and thank you for joining us on the second episode of the Wandering Buffalo podcast. My name is Justin Goddard, joined by my co-host Andrew Ganaic tonight. I just wanted to start out the top of the show with a bit of sad news. Um, we did hear that Bill's Mafia legend Pinto Ron had to undergo an open heart surgery. Um, we heard on his daughter's Instagram post that everything went according to plan and we're hoping for a full recovery. Um, so just wanted to throw from the Buffalo, the Wandering Buffalo podcast family just a speedy recovery. Can't wait to get you back out there, Ron. Um, so on tonight's show, we are going to be diving into the Bills running back group. And before we get started on that, I um, just wanted to preface it with a little bit of you know, the shows we do coming forward are going to feel a little bit nitpicky. Um, so I just wanted to take a little second to remind ourselves that, you know, this season that we just watched was hands down the best season of Bills football I've ever watched. We had a 13-3 and team, won two playoff games, went to the AFC Championship, you know, so scored 500, over 500 points. So, you know, there's a lot of good things to take out of this season. Um, so when we do go forward, it's, it's going to be a little bit nitpicky, but you know, we're trying to win the Super Bowl, and we didn't get there this year. So we're just kind of trying to dive into, um, what we need to do to get to that next level, take down the chiefs, take home the trophy. Um, so before we, uh, that being said, we'll get into it with you, Andrew, you want to get us started on, uh, the bills big two from last year. Sure. Um, you know, uh, before we get into it, I do want to say if you happen to miss our first episode, please go back and check it out, uh, or you can reach us at on all social media platforms, searching The Wandering Buffalo Podcast. Leave us a re- review, spread the word, anything uh, that you can do will definitely help us out, and it'd be much appreciated. Um, like Justin said, today we're going to dive into the running back position. Uh, we're going to start things off with uh, Devin Singletary. So I'm going to just present some stats here uh, presented by ESPN. So Devin Singletary, he's 5'7", 203 pounds. He was a 2019 third-round pick. Some combine notes here to make note of uh, is that he had a 4.66 40-yard dash but got clocked in at 17.56 miles per hour. Um, So I don't know about you, Justin, but 17.56 that seems kind of fast for a slow guy, which is, uh, you know, Singletary's M.O. along with Moss's. But we'll we'll get into the other and uh, we'll get into those guys speed in a second. Um, I will say out of the two, I personally liked Singletary a little bit more than Moss. I don't know if Moss had like the, you know, rookie yips, but it just feel like Singletary could produce a little more, not not saying that there's much that he produced, um, but I feel like he, when the rock was in his hands, he could do a little more. What are your thoughts on Devin Singletary? So I, I kind of land in a similar spot with both of them. Um, Zach Moss being a rookie, he did run into some injuries uh, throughout his first season. Um, but overall... I I think on a surface level, it's easy to say that, you know, they didn't really produce, but it's also in an offense that didn't really ask them to do much. Um, I think there's definitely some times where we could have used more production from them and it wasn't really able to be relied on. Um, But there's also games where we're starting out and we're calling pass plays 28 times in a row, whether that's a design play or Josh calling, you know, changing the play at the line of scrimmage. I mean, you're looking at two dudes that did average about four and a half yards per carry on the season, which isn't terrible. And so as I get into it and I start looking at some numbers across the league, um, you know, yards after contact is something I like to look at a lot for running backs. When you start stacking that up against the the rest of the league, um, just pulling down some easy numbers, 
uh, Singletary had 687 total yards, 156 attempts. 449 of those yards were after contact. Um, so you start looking at, I've seen a name tossed around a lot, Kenny and Drake as a free agent option for the Bills. Um, in 239 attempts, he had 406 yards after contact. Uh, Kareem Hunt, who's kind of a bruiser, 198 attempts, uh, 465 yards after contact. Nick Chubb, one of my favorite running backs in the league, uh, 190 attempts, 511 yards after contact. So these guys did put up a lot bigger numbers throughout the season, but it's also telling me that usually they're getting their first contact a few yards down the field to be able to put up those numbers whereas Singletary and Moss are often getting met in the backfield and having to make the best out of a bad situation. That's that's a that's a very good point. You know, I didn't even think about the yards after contact. So uh, Justin Goddard, our big research man over here at uh, the Wandering Buffalo podcast, um, you know. Those numbers are bought uh, from uh, Pro Football Reference, by the way. Yeah, you know, those – when I think of Devin Singletary – I remember when we drafted him, and I was like, I have no idea who this is. And I remember doing some research on him. He had a like really good rookie year, and uh, you know, a lot of people thought it was going to transition directly to from year one to year two. But we changed up a lot of like our whole personnel. Really, we our preferred starters that we wanted um, on the offensive line weren't really there. Like We were supposed to have Doggins at the left, Cody Ford at the uh, left guard, Mitch Morris at center, John Feliciano at right guard, and then Darrell Williams at right tackle. I, I don't think that actually happened too often in the regular season. If I'm, mista- if I'm not mistaken, it probably happened maybe one, two games. So if you kind of take that small sample size of those two games and compare it to the rest of the season do we see a bump in their you know offensive production the statistics would still lean towards the no side um even if they did you know suggest that they did perform better under those circumstances it's hard for me to personally point there and go like see that that's the that's the problem right there um just because we only have it two out of 13 games. That's that's not enough for me. That's not enough evidence to suggest that that is the reason why they didn't perform that well. Um, moving on to Zach Moss. So Zach Moss, he's a rookie, 5'9", 209 pounds. Uh, almost like a, just a tiny bit beefier version of Devin Singletary. They're like Mr. Clones. Business Decisions. Yeah, Mr. Business. Make make business decisions. So he was a 2020 third round pick. Um, some combine notes. He ran a 4.65, so, you know, a whole hundredth of a second uh, faster than Devin Singletary. But got clocked in at 17.59, so he's, I guess, at his top speed, he was slower. Um, oh, I'm sorry. He was faster. Um, but in the third round when we picked him up, what were your thoughts about that? Were you, were you excited that we got Zach Moss? Uh, I was excited for – Zach Moss was the type of – like he said, he, he's trying to make you make business decisions. Um, he had a nose for the end zone in college. He was able to move between the tackles and get those tough yards. I don't think we really saw that translate to the NFL in his first season. And running backs are usually a position a position that ends up being pretty plug and play. So mm-hmm. Zach Moss is tough for me to know what we have in him going forward. Um, like I said before, he did battle through some injuries during the first season. So you kind of got to give him a little bit of a pass there. But in the time I saw him, I'm... I'm more interested in Singletary going forward and um, kind of building around that. But with the two guys being young and on rookie deals, um, being spoken highly about both of them, um, he did say in his end-of-year press conference that he didn't really necessarily put it all on the running backs. Um, I think it's more of an offensive line issue at this point. I think you're you're going to see those two as the as the one-two punch again next year. I don't think they're going to make any drastic changes in that spot. 
Yeah, I think that's really important. So Devin Singletary, third round pick. Zach Moss, third round pick. The Devin Singletary, he's going into year three. Zach Moss is going to go into year two. I'd I'd like to argue that the reason why Zach Moss didn't really perform as best that he could is look at the off season, COVID. There's no OTAs. There was basically no training camp or, you know, a normal one. It's altered. Uh, and he has a history of injuries in co- in his college career, and then he gets to the NFL. He's got turf toe, and then he's he's just trying to find his way. And I would agree with you. Most running backs who come out, they're they're in their prime. They 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 should be good to go, ready to go. Um, I'm. I, I think that I, I'm very optimistic that next season Zach Moss can take that step forward that we all as Bills fans want him to. I can understand why you'd be skeptical because it just always looked like it, it, it just looked like as soon as someone touched Zach Moss, he'd fall. And it wasn't even like falling forward like uh someone like Marshawn Lynch did when he was on the Bills. Saw him go down with an awful lot of arm tackles. Yeah, you know, I I just... Marshawn Lynch had that ability, like... You could tackle him behind the line of scrimmage, but he would fall forward and make at least a gain of two yards. It just feels like Zach Moss doesn't have that business decision mentality. Well, I, I would say physicality, rather. He does like to lower his head, but it just doesn't look like he pushes the body enough. Um, and I, I like I said, I, I want to blame it on the injuries and him needing that time to be acclimated. Uh, so I, I'm very hopeful for Zach Moss moving forward. That being said, let's get into some of his stats. So for the regular season, he got 112 rushing attempts. Got 481 481 yards, so that's an average of 4.3. Is uh, to mention that Dingle, uh, Devin Singletary got uh, 4.4 yards on average, so they were pretty much getting the same, uh, you know, yards per attempt. He had four touchdowns. He had a long of 31 yards. He caught the ball 14 times for 95 yards, and caught one touchdown. Um, see for the postseason. He ran. He rushed the ball for seven times for 21 yards. That's an average of three. He ran a long of eight. Caught the ball four times uh, for 26 yards and no touchdowns. What do those What do those stats reveal to you, Justin? Um. So I believe that was he got injured in the playoff game as well. So mm-hmm. um, not a complete body of work there. Um. But I think it's kind of just carrying over from the regular season. It's that's kind of pedestrian numbers. Um, but again, it's it's in an offense that wasn't really asking much of them. Um, and kind of where I stand with it is, you know, for the past twenty five years, I've watched Bills football, and it, it was very similar every year. We'd have this great leading the league uh, rushing offense. We'd have a great defense. We couldn't do anything in the passing game, so we weren't going anywhere. So philosophically, I think we had a big shift into we're not going to protect Josh Allen anymore. We're going to let him go out there and win some games, and we're going to sprinkle in some of the run. And honestly, that's what I've wanted to see for the past 20 years or so. And now that we have it, this is where I'm kind of at the point where it's a little bit nitpicky. Um, I would just like to see not more run game, Um, I, I like the splits that we have right now. I would just like to see, you know, when we do pepper in the run game, you know, you got six man boxes that you're going against because they're worried about Josh Allen throwing it all over the yard. Maybe snap off a eight, nine, 10 yard run every so often to kind of keep the defense honest. And that's all I'm really asking out of it. You make, you make a good point. The boxes were showing favorable, favorable run looks and, I personally think that I, I I agree with you. I think that Devin Singletary, Zach Moss, I am perfectly okay with them. If they invest into that position, I'm not going to be upset because I want them to invest their first pick or second pick or 
you know, even the third pick, like uh, in some offensive uh, firepower, we need we need another game changing um, uh, component to the offense. A lot of people want a tight end. I mean, who doesn't want like a Travis Kelsey, right? Or like a Derrick Henry. Thirty one other every, teams in the league. <laughs> every team wants one of those, but only two teams have that, and they're not even on the same team. Um, but it, so they, ha- they've gotten those favorable run looks and, you know, the bills didn't really run that often. And one area that could be the reason for that is we don't know personally as fans, if Brian Dable called a running play and then Josh Allen like checked out of it or the vice versa, right? We, we don't we don't know what's actually getting called from the booth down to the field what Josh Allen sees and what when, when it comes to actually deciding to run the ball we we don't know if they're like uh you know I I don't like this look let's let's just throw it to digs because that worked over and over and over so it's hard to you know what like why why would you not do the same thing that's been working? The only team, the only time it didn't seem to really work was when, uh, you know, the receivers were really like pushed hard on the line and like getting sticky coverage to them. But I think that, I think that even Bean mentioned it. You know, the running backs were like just one one little block away or like one hair pin just so close from breaking something off and that's all we need right we don't like to your point we don't need like uh you know like 50 yards per touches like five six seven eight something to you know make the defense respect the running game because it got to the point where you know teams knew like all right the bills aren't like the bills could run the ball but we know they're that it's not going to be effective so it, we just be, ended up becoming one-dimensional. So I think you and I are on the same page that, you know, moving forward, we just want a, an effective run game. not Maybe not more. If there is more, that's fine. We just want an effective run game. Right, and that's that's where I look at, you know, we touched on it earlier. They both averaged about four and a half yards a carry. Um, I'm not looking for eight yards of carry on the season. But if you can bring that number up to 5.1, something like that, the amount of difference it makes in the game. And, you know, where we were talking about they were getting all these light box looks. Well, you know, if they have a six-man box and you have five linemen blocking, there's one guy that you have to make miss. Um, but that that should be, you know, you burst through the hole. The guy that you want to make miss is a linebacker. Um, and so many times I saw a linebacker coming free and getting them in the backfield. I, how many times have we watched Devin Singletary get the ball in open space and do that little back step he does and just completely undress the defender and run off for another 10 yards? That That's just the type of thing where he's not the type of running back that you, you're going to run these stretch plays and uh, like a crack toss. He doesn't have the mm-hmm. foot speed to get to the outside. But if you right. get him a little bit of off tackle and give him a little lane to work with, he makes people miss on a regular basis. And I think that's just kind of takes me to, I see a lot of mock drafts this time of year, sitting at pick 30, and uh, these experts are, you know, the Bills running game wasn't good last year. We have to go get Travis Etienne. And I'm much more of the camp. It's much less exciting to watch on draft day. But we need to we need to shore up the offensive line. You got Daryl Williams as a free agent. Feliciano is a free agent. You know, I've seen talk that Mitch Morse might be a cap casualty. We don't really know what we have in Cody Ford yet. You know, we have all these questions on the offensive line and, and people want to fix the run game with drafting a, a stud running back. And I think that's kind of one of the positions where if your offensive line is doing what they're supposed to be doing you make a really average running back look really good real fast right so you're you're of the opinion that it's more of an offensive line issue as that opposed is, to the running backs that is very correct okay so i think you and i might 
have a slight disagreement in this area. I don't I don't think it's all on the running backs. I don't think it's all on the um you know the offensive line. So I think Bean, you know, he he's invested the two back-to-back third round picks. I don't think he's going to do anything hasty. He's going to look at look at the running game as a whole. From starts from the top from, you know, Brian Dayball to OG Bobby Johnson to Josh Allen calling plays play calling selects maybe he's checking out of them as I just mentioned maybe he's not I don't know um to the offensive line play to uh maybe yeah you know we also saw Dawson Knox fill in as that running back role or if, I'm sorry fullback role just like Reggie Gilliam maybe we see more of that to help the running backs um or, and you know then we look at the running back so I think as a whole we need to work the bills need to work on on their running game not focus in on just it's not as simple as like you know it's it's just the running backs those those guys we need a new one of those and then we'll be fine it's i don't think it's that simple there's a lot of layers to running the football it's not as simple as like give the ball go right you yeah know, and that's a that's a sean mcdermott favorite quote there just you got to go out there and do your job you got to do your 111th and right you know it doesn't matter how good of a running back you are if you got to get rid of three people every play. Um, you know, if you mix up an assignment, you can have the best left tackle in the game and the left guard can whiff on it. It's It all has to mesh together, and uh, I just think that the – I think looking at it in hindsight, I think Daryl Williams becomes our most priority free agent. Uh, I think you got a lot more out of him than you really expected when you signed that contract. And I think the Bills are in a position right now, um, much like the Chiefs did last year, drafting Clyde Edwards. You got to double down on your strength. And, you know, our defense started to come around a little bit at the end of the year. Um, But I think right now is the time to really put more eggs into the basket of the offense. That that number 30 pick, um, I mean, if it's not offensive line, I don't think you need to go running back there. There's there's a ton of receivers in this draft that you can use for like the gadgety jet sweeps, um, stretch the defense horizontally. Guy I really like is Rondell Moore. Uh, it might be reaching a little bit for him at thirty. He's got a bit of an injury history, but mm. man, every time I watch that guy's tape, that he's lightning in a bottle. He's just waiting to make a play every time he gets the ball. Right. We'll get into that a little bit later. Um, so let's talk about the third man, uh, TJ Yeldon. He is a free agent, just completed his two-year contract with the club. He's 6'1", 220 th- uh, 223 pounds, a 2015 second-round pick. Some combine notes about him. He ran a 4'6'1", so not that, you know, not amazing speed uh, on the 40-yard dash. Uh, got clocked at, at 17.75 miles per hour. Um, he you pretty much saw him as like an emergency running back purpose, right? Um, and statistically, career-wise, he looks pretty much pretty much the same thing as, uh, you know, Zach Moss and Devin Singletary. He's just got way – he's got a lot more height, I'll say that, and, um, you know, not, not a knock to Devin Singletary or Zach Moss. Um, I'm looking at you, Singletary, but he's got he's got some better hands. Um, so what, and you know, here's some stats for, you know, the regular season, not like he did much. So he had 10 attempts, 70 yards, average of seven though, you know, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll get into full-time why starter. Stats, yeah. Full-time starter. You know, he, he touched the ball. He touched rock 10 times, 70 yards. We got to get him in there more. Um, he got the ball one time for 22 yards and got a touchdown full-time starter. Got to put him in there. Um, so what, what are your thoughts about TJ Yeldon? He's just a guy to me, um, for that, for that running back three spot, you know, that's really just a spot for a break, break glass in case of emergency, you know, somebody gets injured, you fill in in spot duty. Um, that's kind of where, I would look to retool the roster a little bit and get something that's a bit different in what you have in Singletary and Moss. Um, I think that's a good spot to add some speed, um, whether it's free agency later in the draft. Um, 
somebody that's good catching the ball out of the backfield and has that breakaway speed that, you know, Zach Moss and Singletary both kind of have that short area quickness, um, but they're not much of the running back for we're going to take the 70 yards to the house. You don't really see that out of them much. Um, so right. there's there's some guys out there with that type of speed that, you know, screen game is something that I could think would help open up the um, running game as well. And we haven't really seen the screen game much with Dable. It's not really mm. accentuated with him. Well, you know, I, it, I think uh, last year the screen game was obsolete and – Screen games are something that you like. A team has to practice. It's not something they can just like roll out, uh, right? And I think we saw a bit of a jump from last season to this season in terms of screen use. And you're right. Like we we definitely could use them more. I think the Bills, when they did do it, it proved to be effective. I I think about the different creativities of uh, different ways they use screens um wide receiver screens i think about that john brown uh john brown goal whip play where he the where john brown C- tunnel screen yeah and he just runs up the field like that was crazy and then we did it twice to them in that same game um that that was one of my favorite games of the season uh devin singletary he we set him up some screens um i pretty sure we said Dawson Knox or tried setting him up first you know, we, we we used Dawson Knox on a couple screens and then we had the the thing with the screen game is Dayball drew up these masterful screens when he did it. It'd be like it always seemed like perfectly. Timed. Yeah, it's like a double motion, and somebody's just running wide open, and and then we don't see it again for three games. And you know that's something that you know in his time in New England j- just beat us in the face over and over again with this misdirection screen. And somebody's just leaking out of the backfield, and the screen game was so good in New England. Mm-hmm. And he comes here, and we just we never see the screen game, and that's something that really, if you have to plan for Josh throwing it down the field, you got to plan for a running back. Then you get hit with the screen game as well. I just I don't really understand why it doesn't end up being a bigger part of the game. And I, right. maybe that's limitations with the running backs that I don't see on a day to day to day basis like they do. But it's mm-hmm. something I'd like to see incorporated more again. Yeah, you know, um, I'm I'm sure the the team is is gonna try pulling out the stops to you know, like try to get the running backs more involved because it it was all Josh Allen and the wide receivers this year, and we can't be that one dimensional um, moving forward. We got like if the team has to run the ball when they have to. And I think that's that's what the Bills need to learn that's going in this off season. So moving forward, you know, Zach Moss, Devin Singletary, and even TJ Eldon all have this rep of being really slow. So again, Devin Singletary, uh, Devin Singletary got clocked at 17.56 miles per hour. Zach Moss got clocked in at 17.59 miles per hour. T.G. Eldon got clocked in at 17.75 miles per hour. So they're all on that, like, you know, middle, uh, 17 middle-ish miles per hour area. And a lot of people go like, oh, my God, I can run faster than that, you know, faster than all those dudes. You can't. <laughs> like, you just can't. And I, I, I thought this would be a little fun little segment. You ever see those memes that go like, you know, the guy she told you not to worry about? versus you Devin Singletary Zach Moss TG Eldon in terms of speed that's the guy she told you not to worry about and the average speed for a man and this is brought to you by healthline.com I'm not entirely sure how accurate this is but they say the average male speed from the age 20 to 40 is 5.9 running speed that's you now, guy, she told you not to worry about seventeen point five something. You, I do 5. personally 9. feel like I'm running over six miles per hour, though. Hey, you know it's it's really those uh, forty year olds uh, up there to that's bringing you down. Bringing you, me down. If you're if you're in that demographic range uh, and you're a listener, you got you got to step it up, guys. We oh. we gotta we gotta you know prove ourselves a little bit. 
um you know our producer here uh jake jacob is suggesting that justin is 40 that's pretty funny not 40 he, yet he's not 40 I'm working yet, on it um you know and if you're listening you know you're probably thinking 17.75 is that like is that fast in the nfl well let's let's do some i, I brought i brought out some i clocked some other uh I got some stats for some other running backs and players in the league um, and some people who aren't even in the league. So fastest man alive, we all know Usain Bolt, got clocked at at 23.35 miles per hour. That's insane. Tyreek Hill, probably the fastest, if not one of the fastest people in the NFL who's not a running back, 19.07 miles per hour. Saquon Barkley, 18.59 miles per hour. Ezekiel Elliott, 18.3 miles per hour. Christian McCaffrey, 18.26 miles per hour. These guys are, these guys that I just mentioned are roughly like one mile per hour, a whole faster than Devin Singletary, Zach Moss, and TJ Eldon. But to me, when I look at that on paper, I'm like, oh, you know, that's not that big of a difference. But if I'm a, if you're a track runner, if you ever done something like that in sport, you know, every second counts. If you can be one mile per hour faster than someone, it shows up on the field, and I think that's what we're seeing here. I don't think that Zach Moss and Devin Singletary and Yeldon are that slow, but when you compare them to like big name players like McCaffrey and Barkley and Hill, they're they're gonna look slow. They're gonna look pedestrian, but you gotta understand these are world pro, like these are professional athletes. These are professional football players. I I just uh it, it's it's hard to for me to like look at them and, you know, say, Yeah, you're pretty slow. Uh, you know the funny thing I'm thinking the whole time here is how many times do you watch a Chiefs game and, and you hear him say something along the lines of, you know, Tyreek Tyree Hill just looks like this next level of speed compared to these other dudes. And, like, they're all professional athletes out there. And you'll see Tyreek running down the sideline. And he's he's not just keeping pace to keep these guys away from him. He's breaking away from those guys. That. A dude like that is otherworldly fast, and I would love to add somebody like that on our team. Yeah, it's phew, speed is dangerous. Hmm. That's and that's partly that's the reason why the Chiefs are as good as they are because they have that game-breaking speed. Anyways, moving uh, further down on the depth chart, Taiwan Jones, special teams ace. Uh, we didn't hear a whole lot about him in the running back position per se, which is probably a good thing. As I mentioned, he is primarily on special teams, I believe, as a gunner, and he does damn good at it. I want this guy back. This team values special team teams players, and I hope we can bring him back uh, for like a veteran minimum deal. I don't know if that's going to happen, but, you know, with this COVID restricted cap, I think it's very possible. Justin, do you want Taiwan Jones back? If so, why and how much, how many years? Just spit spit uh, what's on your mind. Taiwan Jones can have whatever he wants from me. Uh, I go back to uh, the previous season. He had the, um, he had oh, the special gosh. team play. His, ha- his helmet got ripped off, and he kept playing. And he's bleeding out of his forehead. That dude can stay forever. Realistically, oh, yeah. he's staying on the team for, you know, probably the veteran minimum deal. I think he's the type of guy that sticks around. I think, um, like you said, the team does really value special teams. Um, I think in other facets of that, we might have to kind of look at consolidating some positions. But Taiwan Jones is a guy I like to stick around. Uh, moving down further, the um, depth chart, Devontae Freeman. You know, we picked him up during the playoffs. Uh, I think that was a really smart move by Bean. You know, it happened right after Zach Moss got injured. And, you know, a lot of people wanted uh, to insert other people on the depth chart that we'll get to in just a moment. Um, do you see a future for Don- Devontae Freeman 
on this team? Do you see what 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 do you predict happens with him, Justin? I don't I don't think he sticks around at all. I think that was uh we didn't really know the severity of um Moss's ang- uh Moss's injury at the time. Um that's kind of like you they did a really savvy move on that too. Um I forgot the exact circumstance, but he had been in a building so he didn't have to spend the five days um clearing the covid protocols um so that was a guy that if they needed him to dress for that coming game he was there i think that was just an insurance policy if somebody else went down during the week um you Mm -hmm. had a guy that has some nfl experience that you trust with the ball i don't really see anything coming out of that um yeah a guy like kenny stills we'll get to him on the when we talk about receivers more down the line, but I think a guy like that has a much better chance of sticking around. Uh, I watched some tape on Freeman, and I, I'm not really seeing much that gets gets me going for him going you, forward. You think he's past his prime? Yeah. All right. That's fair to say. Uh, I still think it was a great move by Bean Absolutely. just for the plug and play, especially because he timed it so perfectly with the you know the time you have to wait with the COVID test, it just was like, all right, pick him off the street, bring him back in. It was like, you know, COVID wasn't even a thing with him because he was just good to go. Um, again, uh, other running backs, we'll just kind of bunch these two in the same group. Christian Wade and Antonio Williams. I'll start this off. I know that there's this huge fan base for Christian Wade and Antonio Williams, but Neither of them, and this is my own personal opinion, neither of them have shown significant, you know, tape showing that they can do everything that a running back's running back should do. Yeah, they can run the ball. You know, I think about Antonio um, Antonio Williams, week seventeen. He got to play for a half, and he he went off. I'll give him that. He was very good, but. We don't know what he, how he holds up in pass pro. We don't know if that um, running style is sustainable with him. Um, and then on the other side of the coin, you look at Christian Wade. He had a really good preseason. He, the first time he touched the ball, he went for like a, what, 40, 50 yard touchdown, which was pretty cool to see. I was really happy for the guy. Um, but he's, he's a little long in the tooth, and he's still trying to learn the game from rugby to the NFL. He's it it's just both of them have to they're just they they're on a learning curve and a lot of people want go like, you know what? I I see that. I see what they did. I want them. I get it. They're they're a change of pace. You think that they could probably do better than Devin Singletary and Zach Moss, but the ultimate thing is and at least for me and maybe Bean and the other coaches are thinking this too. I don't trust them yet to fill those shoes. Do I think they could do it? Yeah, absolutely. But do I think they can do it now? I don't know. And I think that the fact that, again, there was no training camp hurt their chances. And it's it's unfortunate because uh, I think Christian Wade, like, this is, this is, this is his last season that we can put him on the practice squad as an extra person so we might not be able to see him after this uh after this year he might be a cut candidate but i i just think they they need more time to develop justin what are your thoughts on that yeah so uh, i'll i'll start with christian wade because i think that one's uh pretty cut and dry to me he was a really fun summer story um he was electrifying in a couple preseason games um, but I mean, I believe he was 28 when he first came to us. So, I mean, he's at 30 years old now, still learning the game. It, it's a fun story. It's a great program that they're having to try to, you know, make the, make the league more international, bring in players from elsewhere, kind of taking a page out of the NBA book there, but right. I don't see it happening for him at this point. Great story. Um, I've watched a lot of interviews with him. He seems like a great guy, great to root for. Uh, but he kind of reminds me of like a Duke Williams story, where you know Duke Williams came in, made all kinds of preseason noise, 
but by the time the dude's getting rostered, we're at 28, 29 years old. You know, even if you do pan out, your chances just based on NFL averages of having sustained success, you got maybe a two, three year window. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not really into throwing my eggs into that basket. Um, as far as Antonio Williams goes, you know, he, he looked good in some garbage time of a game that was over week 17 against the dolphins. We smashed them. Um, but what I will say for the guys, I think he's earned a chance to compete for that number three spot. Um, TJ Eldon, he's, he's been fine in his, in his reserve duties. Um, but I'd like to see somebody else get a chance there. Antonio Williams, Man, he was on the roster. He was cut. He was on the practice squad. He was cut. We brought him back. We cut him. But that, we put that guy through the ringer. I and he looked good. And he's a young man, and I, I'd like to see if given the opportunity, if he can develop and if he can do the pass protection stuff that we're looking mm-hmm. for. Because that that's a big reason of why Moss and Singletary are going to stick around. That they're trusted with the pass protection. We don't really know if Antonio Williams has that, but. I would like to see, you know, with a full preseason, training camp, all that, if he can put those pieces together and maybe be a nice little surprise at running back three. Yeah, I, not to, not to paraphrase uh, being here, but I think he's earned the right to compete for that mm-hmm. third running back position. Um, and so has, so has uh, um, Christian Wade, but does that mean that Bean won't look at free agency? I don't know. Let's talk about the free agents out there. So just a couple of names down here. I'm just going to list them off. Justin, let me know what you think about each one of these. I'll start off with Kenyon Drake. Nope. Do too the much. Bills want him? Too much? Okay. Well, why? Why? Uh, if if they could get him in for like a cheap, I don't know, one year deal. One, I don't know, one year deal. Let's say four million. You take that? No, I. I looking at the free agents. There's only two out there that really get me going, and okay. it, it's just kind of the the price tag on any free agent. I'd be more interested in looking at a late round pick and seeing if they pan out. I don't think mm-hmm. we have this immediate need. So if you're picking up a free agent, you're probably looking at an RB two, RB three slot. And I, right. I just I don't want to spend $4 million on that. Um, there's some guys out there. Mm-hmm. Todd Gurley's probably going to get something like $3 million, maybe a one-year deal trying to show he's still got it. Doesn't interest me. Um, if we were going the free agent route, uh, the guy that I really like is Matt Breida. Um, I thought he was going to blow up with Miami, never really stuck on. Um, but the guy's lightning fast. I think he ran like a four three six four three eight forty. He catches passes out of the backfield. Um, for whatever reason, he hasn't really stuck around much with places. But if you're taking a chance on an RB three type of guy, I, I like that type of thing to give us something different than what we have. I think Kenyon Drake is very similar to the running backs we already have rostered. Really, uh, you know. Um... I, I do agree. I think that we need a little variance in that third spot. Um, you know, give give us a reason to activate that third running back, right? That would that would be pretty cool. Um, as far as the list of free agents go, we have Kenyon Drake, Todd Gurley, Mark Ingram, Tevin Coleman, James White, Matt Breida, Mike Davis, Rex Burkhead, Carlos Hyde, Brian Hill, and Leonard Fournette. You know, most of these guys are coming off their, you know, second contract. You know, Todd Gurley, Mark Ingram, Matt Breida, um, and you know, other guys are going on to their second contracts. I, I, you know, when I was younger, I used to always think we need a star running back, and the Bills did that. You know, they got LaShawn McCoy. We had and it was we had awesome. Fred Jackson and Marshawn Lynch on the same team and we still drafted CJ Spiller. Yeah. And it was we spent so much money into that position that we couldn't get 
invest in other areas and it just proved that it was a bad investment so i agree with you i don't really want to invest in free agent running backs like i don't want to invest like meaningful dollars in there um and i agree i would agree with you if i'm looking at this free agent list some names that stand out to me uh matt Breda and you know maybe even leonard fournette i don't know maybe maybe i'm having a low recency bias myself but if i can get playoff lenny in here that run that he had again in the nfc championship game where he runs into the middle of that pile bounces on the outside and scores like a 30 yard touchdown against the uh, packers was pretty sweet um but i don't i don't know if he's a locker room fit which you know is a big issue which is a big thing here in um western new york so uh, we'll have to see if any of these guys actually make it or if, if they even have the right DNA and if they have if there's mutual interest to bring them into the building. Now, now when you rattled off that list of names, I, I, I remembered a guy I've forgotten. I'm embarrassed about it. Um, Mike Davis. I would love to bring in Mike Davis. Um, if you tuned in last week, uh, I did get my first prediction on this show right. I did predict Carson Wentz would go to... Indianapolis, I got the compensation all wrong, but the landing spot I got right. That. I got that right. Now, yes, you did. Um, so I would love to bring a guy like Mike Davis in, um, but I think Carolina is going to be in a rush to get him back because I think Christian McCaffrey is going to get shipped out of town. And you think? I, I'm predicting Carolina puts together a pretty sweet trade package with the Houston Texans. No way. And they land themselves to Sean Watson, shipping all kinds of ones and twos out of town and Christian McCaffrey. That's my that's my take on that one. You know it's it, a hot one. It might not they happen. Could, I that is a hot take. You know, if that happens, I I don't I'll I'll give you whatever you want, man. But I just look at that salary cap that Houston has and I don't know if they can take on uh uh, salary cap like a uh, salary cap hit of McCaffrey's um, but hot take Tuesdays they're gonna be we'll, shutting we'll contracts take... left and right they'll make it fit you make you I make will... Christian McCaffrey fit yeah you know what I what I will say they the you know the Panthers are shutting off cap uh, so maybe that is a indicative of the fact that they are going to be making a move of that magnitude but uh, hey we'll see okay. Anyways, um, let's get into some running back prospects. So, Justin, you pulled up some top running backs. Do you want to tell the people about how you found them? Um, so, I was looking just through a a lot of um, mock drafts and prospect rankings and things like that. Um, I don't watch all of the college football that these guys watch because who can follow that much college football? So... I kind of like to take a a look at where I think the Bills would be looking to go um, and then kind of let people direct me into some film that I should be watching. Um, So Walter Football was was one of my sources for just looking up running back prospects. Um, I have to give credit to uh, Joe Marino over uh, on Locked on Bills. Uh, no matter how much I look at any of these prospects outside of Najee Harris, he's about the only person I would take at 30 if we're going running back. But uh, Joe Marino made me fall in love with this kid from Louisville, uh, Javion Hawkins. And just mm-hmm. watching his tape, he's just he's so much fun to watch. He's one of them little Chan Gailey, water bug, scat backs, quick as a cat, whatever <laughs> he said, something like that. Uh, he's a little guy. Five nine, buck ninety, but man, can he move? He's special when he's got the ball in space. And yeah, you want to talk about setting the edge? Yeah. You, you get that guy there. Yeah, he's a and he's a guy that's, you know, they're projecting anywhere from like the third to fifth round. Mm-hmm. So that's that's somewhere where you know you can address the first couple rounds of filling the major impact holes. We might be looking for a Matt Milano replacement. We might be looking for offensive line. You might be able to scoop up a guy like that in the uh, in the fifth round. And right. All right. Well, I believe Justin took the Walter football's top 10 running backs and they stratified it by 40 times or, you know, the top 40 times speed. Uh, so, um, and these are projections because they're, 
there hasn't been a combine. Um, so they won't be one. Yet. Yeah. We might have to update this when some of these players will have pro days and whatnot, but they're kind of going off projections. Yeah. We're just doing some sneak peeks right now. Uh, so the first one, uh, we have Travis ATN Clemson. Uh, we do have some career notes and, you know, the projected 40 yard time as well as, uh, pro football networks, positive notes on them. No negatives, uh, just positive for time's sake. That's nice of them. Um, yes. So uh, let's let's look at Travis Etienne. Some uh, pro football network says what stands out the most in Etienne's is Etienne's burst and speed. Etienne might be the quickest accelerator in the 2021 running back class. He can gear up over an extreme, extremely short distance, and his elite straight line explosiveness uh swiftly negates tackling angles and allows him to seep into de- into the space downfield atn's burst helps him fit, hit holes with for, uh, ferocity and it also enables him to make any uh any given play on a foot race one thing i noticed um with him is that he hits the hole fast i like he's he is explosive that is that description of his positive attrib- attributes is very spot on. He he cannot he can do he he's just explosive. He can set the edges. He can catch out of the backfield. And what's really important um, is that he's versatile and the fact that he can catch you know punt returns. Um, Justin, what are your thoughts on him? C.J. Spiller. C.J. Spiller. He scares okay. the crap out of me because he reminds me of C.J. Spiller, and this yeah. is this is a guy. If they if they went running back in the first round, I don't think there's any way Najee Harris makes it to us. Um, Etienne is a guy I think they w- would look at at thirty, um, and maybe it's the Clemson in him. Uh, there's something about him that reminds me of Spiller that scares me. And I think Spiller got a little bit of a raw shake in Buffalo. And like I said, we had Fred Jackson, we had Marshawn Lynch. It was kind of a luxury pick, and we uh, we just tried to fit him in in the wrong ways. I don't think the offense was ready for him. And we were, that was a year that we were in between Fitzpatrick and Trent Edwards. Our number two receiver on the outside was James Hardy. So I just don't. Maybe the team just wasn't ready for that type of player. The NFL is a bit different now, but ETN scares me a bit. Right. Uh, ETN leaves the Tigers as the program's all-time leading rusher at 4,952 yards. He earned ACC Player of the Year honors in 2018 and 2019. And he could have got it in 2021, but, you know, um, he's going to go for the draft instead. Um Let's see here. Let's let's move on to Najee Harris, Alabama. He's projected to run a four-five-three. Um, one couple things I noticed: he's got vision, great contact balance. Every time I watched this man run, it looks like you know he would just like get kind of pushed, but he wouldn't fall over. He would just kind of toddle a little bit and then just keep going, like like nothing never happened. He's got. He's got hands, and it always seems like when he's on that one-on-one, he's going to make you miss. Um, it, you know, his most popular highlight is that hurdle uh, over that Notre, Notre Dame player, I believe, which was really, really impressive. It, it gave me that uh, Josh Allen, um, Anthony Barr type vibe. I was like, ooh, it got me going. Um, and one thing to note, he didn't um uh partake in the senior uh Reese senior bowl because he was dealing with an ankle injury maybe something you want to note um although he does have that dna and what i mean by that is that he was uh a jason witten collegiate man of the year finalist so he over he has overcome a childhood um uh, challenging childhood in which he faced homelessness uh to become a vocal leader in the community, uh, specifically in Alabama's community, and to fight for social justices, um, and for the uni- and tried pushing the university towards a more unified campus. 
Um, he's also been an active member in uh, the community, recording over 50 hours of community service, services highlighted by his volunteer efforts with the Alberta Head Staff Unity Project. So on and off the field, he's great. Justin, you don't think he gets there at 30. If he's there at 30, are you mad if the Bills take him? Not at all. I think he's uh, he's probably one of the best prospects in this draft. Um, you know, there's there's going to be that NFL run on quarterbacks early, but this guy, is, he's just the, the all-around running back that you have there. He's got some juice to him. He's got that Derrick Henry stiff arm. Maybe not quite Derrick Henry stiff arm, but he's got the stiff arm. He's got the physicality. He's jumping over people. If he's there at 30, I'll I'll sign up for a round one running back, but I don't think he makes it past the Jets at what is it, 18? Uh, I don't I don't know where they are, but I, you know, I I I don't think that the Jets will pull the trigger on uh Najee Harris that early. I I I think Joe Douglas is competent and that might be an issue for us moving down the pipeline. Um, so hopefully, hopefully I'm wrong, but he, so far he's proven that he's he's okay. <laughs> um, so you you mentioned that you wanted um, Hawkins, right? Yes, sir. Correct. So one person who I think that the Bills should target, maybe not in the first or second round. I think the Bills should target someone like uh, Kenny Gainwell out of Memphis. He's fast. Four, he's projected to go 4-4-7. Four, four, he's patient. He lets blocks get set up. And then he's very versatile. You know, when I watch, watch this man's uh, highlight reel, he can line up in the Wildcat, which, you know, it's like Wildcat, whatever, cool. Um, he can line up in the slot position. I, the, I saw him running out on you know, routes and he didn't look bad. He's a good running back and he's got hands. You can't play slot if you can't, you know, catch the ball, you know, out of all like the running back highlights tapes that I saw, this man was the only one the, like his tape was the only one where I was like, Oh wait, he didn't get the ball right away. Where is he? Oh wait, he he's running down in the slot, like, like a monster. So that's, that's someone who I think the bills maybe should target. I don't know I don't know if he's going to be available. I don't know where he, where, you know, the rubber meets the road in terms of value and draft pick. But if the Bills got someone like Kenny Gainwell in the building, I think, I think that's a real, real playmaker. You want to talk about someone who, who's a gadget player that I think this man is that gadget player. But then again, I'm not a draft expert, nor do I claim to be. But if you're listening, check him out. Javion Hawkins or bust, man. Um, I say Hawkins I say bust. that joking, but I would love to see him in the building. Um, I think I think for those, if you're looking at third, fourth, fifth round for running backs, um, the Bills are in a, a bit of a place of luxury right now. As you know, we already have a very deep, talented roster, um, so you can kind of sit back and see where the board falls to you. Um, I think there's going to be tons of motion at the top of this draft for, um, I'd, I'd say you probably got four quarterbacks going in the top 10. And when you're sitting at 30, that's a beautiful thing to see because it's just pushing talent down to you um, with all these quarterback hungry teams. So, you know, it's, it's a good point. Seeing, being able to see what falls to you, you know, some of these guys that might be projected in the third fourth round you might be able to get some of those guys at fifth in the fifth round if you're patient and that's that's kind of my mindset on not wanting to jump on a running back at 30 there there's all kinds of guys with talents out there and especially if we already kind of have the top two kind of settled in i don't think we need to go day one to be replacing these guys so okay i uh yeah you know I, I don't want the Bills to use their 30th overall pick on a running back. Now, if you trade down and pick them up with the second round pick and get some type of draft compensation um, in return for that 30th pick, you know, I could, I could, I could, I could live with that. I'm all for and, that. 
even if the Bills did take a running back on at 30th, you know, I I wouldn't I wouldn't be you know that upset. You know, it's like whatever. Uh, I, I I I don't trust make the, the decision. process. I trust. Yeah, I trust it too. Um, moving on to one of the last, um, a couple other. Well, I'll just mention a couple other people on this list that you can check out if you're interested. Um, so there's. I'm not going to try to pronounce his name, but uh, let's see: Michael Carter of North Carolina, Larry Roundtree from Missouri, Javante Williams of North Carolina, Dimitric. Uh, Demetric Felton of UCLA, Chubba, uh, Chubba Hubbard from Chubba Hubba. I want Hubba him Bubba. just for his name. <laughs> yeah, that reminds me of like the Hubba Bubba Bubblegum. <laughs> reminds me of Chumba Wumba. Um, Chubba, please don't, please don't listen to this and come find find us and tear us up. Please don't do that. <laughs> um, Trey Sermon of Ohio State, and let's see. And we're going to briefly talk about this last person here, Jarrett Patterson, Buffalo. He's projected uh, a four to run a 4-5-4. Four, four. He's a super deep sleeper, according to Pro Football Network. Um, this is what they had to say. Patterson isn't the fastest or most explosive running back, but what but what he does well is somehow manage to slip out of tackles and keep going for extra yardage. Of nearly 1,800 yards, Jarrett Patterson ran for last season for Buffalo. More than half of those running backs' yards came after contact. You want to talk about, you know, yak. He's, this this is this is yak. He's going to need it with this offensive line. Um, one thing to note, his last year... He only caught the ball for caught the ball thirteen times for two hundred yards. So he's kind of you know he he doesn't really know how to do it that well. Um, but you know the the Bills knew that when they got Devin Singletary and he turned out to be fine catching the ball, minus the AFC Championship game. I'm not that upset with that drop, but you know <sighs> that I know one still Justin hurts me. Here. You know, I, I can't look at that one play and go like, you know, I, that's the reason why we lost. I can. Devin Singletary, you're the reason. <laughs> I can't look at Scapegoat. that. Scapegoat. I can't put it on him. <laughs> um, so, Justin, what are your thoughts on Jared Patterson? Uh, I think he's very interesting, and this is, uh, this is an area of scouting where there's a reason why I'm sitting in this chair and not running an NFL organization. The mm-hmm. the difference in competition levels coming out of UB versus coming out of a major program, and I don't know how to match all that up. I think it's really interesting. I I love uh. I love the fact that he went to UB. I'd love to see that you know a UB guy end up on the Buffalo Bills. I think it's really fun. I think it's really exciting. I think he's wicked talented. And I think, uh, like you said, he might be a really big sleeper. I'd love to see him in the late rounds and watch him blow up, but mm-hmm. I don't know how to watch film on him and compare him to these other guys, to be honest. Yeah, it's... It, the, it, you know, Pro Football Network even mentioned it. It's an anomaly. Half of his 1,800 yards were after contact. That's a lot. 900 yards? 900 yak yards? Like, what? Yeah, that's crazy. I can stumble forward for, like, an inch when I trip over myself, let alone go a yard. So, like, <laughs> I just can't. I, I, you know, also, I'm not trying to, like, run forward. I understand that's not the same thing. But it's just cra- he He's an anomaly. And w- whatever team picks him up, I'd be very interested to see how he develops. Um, or what he can what he can develop into. Anyways, to wrap everything up, uh, Justin, you I think I got this right, but it sounds like you are comfortable with RB one, RB two being Zach Moss, Devin Singletary. Uh, you want you want to find someone to fill that third role, whether it be through the draft, JV and Hawkins, um, or or just a meaningful free agent named Matt Breida no one Uh, else you seems really interested with but other than that you feel you sound like you're 
content with this running back room. Is that is that fair? I am. I, I got one more name to float out there in the, the free agent market that I, I forgot to get your thoughts on earlier. Who is um, this? And this is kind of like a hybrid position. Cordero Patterson. Mm. I think he's uh, he's getting a little bit older, but you've seen him out in Chicago. He th- you... They were playing him in the backfield. He was playing receiver. He was returning punts. He was returning kicks. He's still electric doing that. And if we're talking, that's a guy that's going to probably get a veteran mid- minimum deal. I don't hate him as a third down or a RB3 catching a couple passes out of the backfield. Get him into space, see what happens. I, You weren't expecting that curveball. I, I was not expecting you to throw that curveball in here, but I'm just trying to think. I don't even know, like, what, what position do you even sign for a Cordero Patterson? RB, wide receiver, kickoff returner, punt returner. He's all those things. He's basically, he's basically what you would want if you – you were in a lab and you took Andre Roberts and Isaiah McKenzie and you smacked them all together and you were like there. So I, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'd be very cool for that. Uh, I'd be very uh, on board with that. Um, if the bills do end up getting a Cordell Patterson, I still think that they'll try to do something with that running back room. I think that, they would take a Patterson and put him in as a gadget player, wire like punt ret- uh, return man specialist. But they'll still probably focus in on the running back room with another body. Um, any other uh, notes you want to wrap up here before we let the people go? Uh, I'm good, man. Hawkins are bust. Hawkins are bust. All right, guys. Well, you've been listening to the Wandering Buffalo podcast. If you could go ahead and, uh, you know, leave a review. So you can find us on all social media by searching the Wandering Buffalo podcast. Like I said, if you haven't gone back and listened to the first episode, please do so. We talk about Josh Allen in the quarterback room, and it, it's a good episode. So we'd be happy for you to go back and listen to that. Uh, tune into next week. Justin and I are going to talk about the wide receivers, which would be very uh, exciting. And we might have a special guest on there. So uh, look out for that. Justin, anything else you want to say before we let the people go? That's it. Like, share, comment. We uh, It does really help us out if you can do that for us. So we appreciate the support so far. Tune in next week. Go Bills. Go Bills. Go Bills.